So you're looking to move to Metro Detroit, Michigan, and maybe you're moving from out of state, maybe you're moving in state, and this is your first time, second, third, and it's just been a while. Well, that process can be pretty nerve wracking and understandably so. Now, not only have I moved multiple times throughout the Metro Detroit area, but I've also helped hundreds of clients do so from out of state and even within the Metro Detroit area. And whether you're moving from out of state into Metro Detroit, or whether you're moving from in Metro Detroit just to a new location, it can be very nerve wracking and there's a lot of steps that go into it. I have personally done everything that there is, whether it's packing myself, putting everything in the U-Haul and driving it myself. I've hired packers, I've hired movers, and hint, hint, the best way to do it is to hire movers and packers to do it for you. So I've come up with a list of the best tips, tricks, and advice to help you move and make that as smooth as possible. So if you're moving into the Metro Detroit, Michigan area, or really if you're moving anywhere, this list is going to help you. Of course, we're biased towards Metro Detroit, so we would love to help you do that. But this list can actually help you move anywhere throughout the country, and we're gonna jump into that right now. My name is Nick, and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button so that you can stay in the know with all of the latest and greatest information about the Metro Detroit, Michigan area. I'm a local real estate agent here, and my team and I have helped hundreds of clients move into, whether it's buying, selling, or investing in the Metro Detroit market, and we would love to do the same for you. If you're interested, make sure to hit our contact information below in the description, whether it's text, phone call, or email, we would love to be in contact with you and help you give that smooth move to Michigan. So hopefully you're looking to move here soon, and hopefully you've already given us a call, so we've already given you these tips and tricks. But whether you're looking to move in 10 days or 10 months, this list is going to help you move into the Metro Detroit area as smoothly as possible. So let's start off with tip number one, and that is look in the description below. What I've done is I've put together a moving checklist, whether you're moving from in the state or out of the state, and it'll give you a step-by-step -step process to help you and do that well in advance. This is a um, pretty exhaustive list that's gonna help you move completely from step one to step two, all the way to the closing day, and then even after closing. So that leads us into tip number two, which is start as early as possible. I cannot stress this enough. You want to make sure that you're covering all of your steps and the last thing you wanna do is cram it in, trying to hire movers, which actually leads me into point number three, which is vet or screen moving companies. Whether you are looking to have somebody come in and pack, and load up and move or just do some of those you want to start screening and looking at moving companies within the area that you're going so for oakland county the simplest thing that you could do would be to either go to google or yelp or different websites like that from there you're just going to put moving companies in county name or city name and it should give you a pretty good list my biggest recommendation is to start to look at all of the reviews obviously there are going to be you know some good some bad you're going to weed through those but the best thing that you can do is look through the reviews of any given moving company some of the well-known might be um, the college hunks or two men in a truck companies that you've heard of before and then there are also some smaller mom and pop companies as well Step number four is to pack a suitcase. I cannot stress this enough. You wanna make sure that you have everything in the truck and it's all loaded up, but just in case anything happens, and it does happen, believe it or not, you want to have at least one or two weeks of underwear, socks, clothes, pack for all different types of weather. That way that you have everything ready to go should anything go missing or be delayed. You also wanna make sure that you have your toiletries, all of the the dog food, all of your kids' clothing and toys. Come up with a list of things that you wanna pack for a one to two week just to be safe. Tip number five is to sell or give to charity as much as possible before moving. This is one of those topics that might stir up a little bit of a fight, but one of the best things that you can do is actually take inventory of what you need and what you don't need and either sell the things that you don't need or give it away to charity. The other thing that I see most commonly happen, whether it's an individual, a couple, or a family that are moving, they get to the new location and they realize the furniture doesn't fit or it doesn't fit the decoration style that they're going for. So try to take inventory of those things up front. That way you can get rid of it before hauling it from one place to the next. Along with that is make sure that you have proper measurements. So whether you're going to the property during the showing or the inspection, or if you have your agent who's the boots on the ground doing it because you're out of state and moving in, ask them to take measurements for you. That way you get a good understanding of the size furniture, whether it's couches, beds, love seats. Uh, make sure that you're getting those measurements so that you can plan accordingly. 
Tip number six is pack a parts box. So what I mean by this is pack your tools, pack all of the necessary accessories that you might need last so that it's actually at the back of the truck or if you're just moving in your car, it's at the very front of the car. That way it's the first thing you pull out. Why this is important is because you'll need that screwdriver to put together and take apart chairs and tables and different things like that. And you want to have that readily accessible. If you pull out half of the items and they need to be put together and you have no idea where your parts box or your toolbox is, that could be a problem. Tip number seven, and this one is super important, is make sure that you transfer utilities into your name. In the Metro Detroit area, you will have DTE and consumers. This is going to take up your electric and gas. You will also want to make sure that you are forwarding your mail. Along with forwarding your mail, let family and friends know where your new address is going to be so that they can start to put that into um, their address book or their websites, whatever they have to be able to track that and start to send you mail there. But make sure that you send that forwarding mail to the new address, which usually will take place for about a week uh, to 30 days. Just make sure that you're, you're keeping close track of that so that you can follow the mail and it's nothing is getting missed. So going back to the utilities, depending on the time of year, Michigan can be either really hot if you're looking at July or August, or it can be really cold if you're looking at January or February. You want to make sure that the gas and electric are in your name and turned on from the point that you move into the home so that you are not either freezing or sweating your butt off. The day to call and turn utilities on and in your name, including gas, electric, and water, would be the day before closing. This is the most guaranteed time of, hey, we have a closing schedule. This is the date. We know we're moving towards it. That is the best time to get that scheduled. That way you know you have working electric, gas, and water when you move into the home. After closing, make sure to turn in your property transfer affidavit to the city assessor's office. Your closer or notary will make sure to let you know and they will put that on top of your packet when they send you off after closing, but you will have 45 days to do so. It is important that you take that copy to the city assessor's office, turn it into them. They are going to timestamp it and then give you a copy. Keep that copy on file. What this does is, say, is it says, hey, we just purchased this house. We are now the owners and it allows the taxes to be set up accordingly so that they're not dramatically increased and then keep that copy so that you have proof of it in the future, whether it's a hard copy or download a digital copy of that property transfer affidavit. So that is all of the tips, tricks, and advice I have for you if you're looking to move to the Metro Detroit area or even if you're looking to move throughout the rest of the country. Again, it doesn't have to be Metro Detroit, Michigan. We would love for it to be. And if it is, again, that's why we say whether it's 10 days or 10 months from now, our contact information is in the description below. Feel free to call, text, or email. We'd love to chat with you. We've actually had people who were in town reach out to us that day and close on a pro or get under contract on a property within a 24 hour period. And I just had a client reach out to me say, hey, we're looking to move into the Metro Detroit area within the next two years. So wherever you're at on that, on that scale, please feel free to reach out to us and we would love to help. Feel free to check out the channel for the rest of the videos um, and breaking down different locations that you might be looking to move to. And until then, have a good one.